Hey, what's up? Light just went out. Got no blue. Sorry, threw him off. My bad. It happened like right when it started. Sorry. <laughs> it was like as soon as the music stopped. <laughs> Got me. Oh, I died. I charged him. I didn't do it. You can watch the video. I did not do it. Okay. I know you're going to think I did, but I didn't do it. <laughs> now you're going to think I did, but I didn't do it. Hold on. Oh, okay. Does it work? You can still see it a little bit. Kind of. Not as much, but hey, it's over there. <sighs> All right, from the top, let's go. Hey, what's up? It's your host, Joel Hawkins, with another Mix It Up podcast. As always, here with my buddy. Hey, Joel. And today, we're going to be doing another V. Is it a V week coming? Maybe. I don't know if we'll call it a V week. Maybe not. We'll see. Maybe not. V week. 3.0. Uh, no, uh, this is blue. Wait. Yes, it's right on a TV. <laughs> Big as day. I didn't know if maybe that was like the first word of the first verse. And no. Yeah, okay. It's, it's blue. in the color v. blue. Blue. We're going to be checking that out today. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when new videos are coming out. And don't mm-hmm. forget to be awesome to people in the next coming weeks. We got Thanksgiving coming up. If you celebrate that holiday, if you don't, uh, hug your mom. Tell her hi. What about the dads? Dads don't get no love. Always hi, mom. Yeah. Hi, dad. Yeah. Hug dad too. Dad needs a hug. Mama's boy. If you're a lady, hug your father. Somebody. Or hugs. Just give a high five. Make it, make it awkward. Make it awkward. Give your family all high fives. No hugs. <laughs> no hugs. Withhold <laughs> hugs. See see how much like they might you could tell who's the hugger though. They'll be like, Come on, just give me a hug. And, like pull you in, you know? My aunt used to be that way. Oh, don't act like that, Joel. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Like, stop pulling on my cheeks. They're huge enough. But, yeah. So we're going to be checking out V. Blue! I wonder if it's going to be as funky. Well, the last one wasn't funky. It was more soft, serene, but had a little, little bit of funk in it. A little, funk. a little bit of funk. A little bit of funk. Not a whole lot of funk, bit, but a little bit of funk. Little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Got more of a jazz feel. Which a lot of his stuff does. Yeah. True. Those paper clips. Oh no. <laughs> On his jacket. <laughs> what if I show you and make it on you? Green yellow breath blue. Whatever seems good to you. Tell it hard. Pure on the pure to So this might have to have come before the last video. Why is that? 
last video he had the dog at the end. Oh, so he just found the dog right then. So he had the dog at the end and he had a green check mark oh, it's blue. on the dog's picture on the last video. Oh, this yeah, one was yeah. blue. So I got to look that up now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So looking it up. Blue. Blah. Blah. <laughs> I, honestly, for half the, how many times he said it, I was like, man, he better be talking about like blue being sad. Otherwise, this is a song about a color the entire time. <laughs> You see, it said blue like 65,000 times. Okay. I'm about to read what oh, it okay, actually okay. means. But to me, it felt like blue is a song about melancholy and the indecisiveness that happens with melancholy, like trying okay. to figure out a way to get out of it. Because okay. he kept going to her door, going back down to the car, then back to the apartment, then out. And it almost felt like the security guard was like, you know, his neighbor going, dude, I just want to leave out my door without walking into you. Like, because every time he was going back <laughs> in and coming out, and every time the guy looked like, oh, again, like, he just looked upset every time. He saw V, like, do you just could wait around the parking lot? Stop, God. No, but that's not obviously what it was. Uh, Blue. Uh, it's a song that explores the theme of longing for love and emotional connection which you could tell by the indecisiveness of him going up to our window and door and wanting to knock, but not. While the lyrics are somewhat ambiguous, they portray a sense of yearning and desire to, re to rekindle a relationship that may have faded or become distant. The repeated, the, re the repeated phrase on and on and on suggests a hope for continuity and, or continuity. I hope that's what it... Yeah, continuity and an endless continuation of love. A repetition uh, may symbolize the persistence of emotions and the desire for a relationship to endure. Uh, the lines, what if I know you and make it all green, yellow, red, blue, blue, could imply a willingness to understand and embrace the other person's perspective in order to revive the love that once existed. Which by the way, that is a very desperate sense of a person if you're willing to alter perspective to try and rekindle that love and relationship, that's not a good foundation to grow any type of relationship on. It really isn't. Because you're trying to get understanding. No, no, no. Understanding is different. Changing your own ideals and perspectives so that you fit someone else's perspective enough to continue a loving relationship is not a good thing. You lose your own individuality, which for some people is what they want because they don't like themselves, but it tends to be a more codependent relationship, which can be dangerous. Codependency is very dangerous for a lot of people because one, I've known women and men who have been involved in relationships became codependent. And then when that relationship ended because the other person was like, you know, I really don't want someone who's basically hanging on everything that I do and wanting to know what I want to do and everything. I want them to be their own person. You know, two individuals coming together, building a relationship together, not one individual building a relationship and the other person just latched on like a yeah. parasite. So whenever that person leaves the relationship, they're left with nothing and they're just empty because their whole life was that relationship. They had nothing else. And I've known some like friends of mine that were women that literally had no career prospects. Mm. I mean, they were going back to working at the same place they worked at when they were 18, which is like a waitress job yeah. because they had no career prospects, no ideas, not even no like, progress, not even skill sets that, that can be sellable or usable, you know, because I can tell you right now is that cleaning houses and taking care of kids and that you might think, oh, well, I can do that. I do that really well. But I can tell you, there's a lot of people who can do that well, too. And if they're in the same position, they might have better experience or I don't know. I don't really know why, but I mean, it's just it's a higher job market. It's a lot of people and you have to have a lot of trust and been doing it a while because all all someone needs if they're looking for someone to take care of their kids. Right. They're going to look for someone who's not going to be like, oh, I'm in a new relationship. I can't do it for you anymore. I got to mm -hmm. say bye. No, they're going to look for firms. They're going to look yeah. for places. 
that can yeah. provide that reasonably and reasonably exp- reasonably inexpensive and still have higher quality and reliability so i know that went on a little tangent but no i see the indecisiveness that's in v in the video mm-hmm. and he's like walking back and forth doing this and that like it's almost like he doesn't know exactly where his direction leads mm-hmm. and where he's going with it he knows where he wants to go but every time he gets near it it's almost like two magnets repelling each other Like he can't ever actually touch that door or that window or knock or do anything. Every time he's like, just grab the plant. Like like the minute he gets near it, he's like, should I? And then, you know, he's not going to because he's already questioned it the minute he gets there. Um, which was funny because I watched the movie last night, uh, quiz lady with Aquafina. It's actually a really good movie. You should watch it. I didn't know it was going to be. And it was actually pretty good. Is it on Netflix? Prime Video, maybe? I think I got Prime. I think it may be on there. Anyways, but... uh, And what's funny is this old lady in there who's been in a million TV shows and movies literally says uh, the thing that I have been saying for forever, which is, honey, because she's like super nervous, the character, and like she can't deal with people and like she's just literally like... She tries to make everyone happy, but at the same time, you know, she's so nervous and afraid of being like, you know, made fun of or laughed at or anything that she doesn't live her life. Mm. And the lady goes, honey, you have to separate your happiness from the way others from yeah. others. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, 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 damn. like, I just felt like so vindicated, like, because I've seen other people who are you know, people who study philosophy or people who try to help with mental health issues and things like that relationship. I've seen them all say the same thing I'm saying, but it was nice to hear it actually put in the world of Hollywood and be like, no, this is literally what I'm saying. You need to detach. But then they backdoored it. She ended up saying something like it was like, you need to separate your happiness from a, blah, blah, blah. And then she went on a dark note and it was like, cause none of it matters. We all die or something like that. And I was like, oh man, you didn't have to backdoor it with that. You could have been hopeful <laughs> or everybody's a piece of shit. Like something like that. It was, it was something like that. I can't remember what it was, but uh, yeah, I, did. I watched that last <laughs> night and I was like, you, you, vindicated. you, you. Yeah, because I've always lived that way, and I, I never understood why anyone else couldn't do that. Like, they were so obsessed with how everybody thinks. I'm also saying, guys, I mean appropriately, okay? I don't separate that to the point where it's like, I'm going to walk naked down the street. <laughs> you know, it's not. <laughs> give it any bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not to that type of obsession because that point you're just criminalizing everything that you're doing. <laughs> no, it's like, it's just like separating my happiness from the way others view me makes me way happier. Yeah. Because you're not worrying what everybody else thinks when they see you like, oh, what do they think about me? Oh, no. Like I've had my mom say stuff to me that was like borderline, like don't embarrass me. You know, borderline. She doesn't really come out and say it when I was a kid different story she would literally tell me my face don't you embarrass me in front of these people (laughs) because i would again even as a kid kid like she would kind of laugh at it but be extremely embarrassed because i would say like just some of the most honest like memory (laughs) floating through your like opinion floating through my head would come flooding out with no filter (laughs) i'd be in line she'd be holding my hand i'd look up at the woman in front of us go you're fat and smile at her just be super too honest <laughs> that's why I don't fault kids when they look at me and they go jeez did you eat someone else like, <laughs> I'm like hey kid you know what over you're time right. yeah, <laughs> you're right buddy in 20 years though <laughs> you're gonna be there too but you got the jowls for it calm down <laughs> but uh yeah I mean uh yeah it's just I don't know you just got to separate from that happiness. But I like the video. I like it. It was a little bit funky, a little bit laid back funky. Kind of, kind of the, I, I want to say like if you mixed old school laid back type funk, but more hinted of like 90s R&B, a little bit of jazz. It wasn't too jazzy. It wasn't crazy jazzy. 
because the first couple songs we heard from him, it was like, man, yeah, that dude loves jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Did he play the saxophone? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hell, and in two of them, he even had a quartet with him playing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but uh, you're off. yeah, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when new things are coming out. And let me give you a high five and say better health, better wealth, my friends. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>